What I have with me over here is the South American electric eel. This crazy creature can shock you and produce a shock which can at least on you but even has the potential to kill and the shock ranges from around 500 volts or so. I'm not too sure. That's a public figure. What we're actually going to do now is we're going to calculate the current and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the current generated by this electric eel and find out how it doesn't shock itself. And to do that, we'll need the help of Kirchhoff's laws. First, some slight context. These electric eels contain a special type of cell called electroplaque. So this electroplaque is basically a battery, a tiny cell if you like. And every cell, as we know, can be resolved into a tiny internal resistance, R, and the main EMF, E. An electric eel has around 5,000 to 6,000 of these cells. And each cell can produce an, around an average EMF of 0.15 volt. And the internal resistance would be around 0.25 ohms. These electroplaques are arranged in a series parallel combined array with one end starting at its tail and the other end ending near its head. So the series would be something like this. And dot 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 dot. Or actually, I'll do it in a different color to make that a little more visible. Uh, let's do it in red. So it would be like, and the battery, and, and so on, dot dot dot. And over here, the other end. And that goes on. And this, there's a series of this as well. And the water, I'll do that in blue. The water completes the circuit outside the fish. And if you happen to brush against this fish, be ready for a, well, it's an eel rather. If you ever brush against this, be ready for an extremely nasty shock. So let's find out how it produces this lethal shock. Uh, I'll assume the resistance of the water to be around 800. So resistance water equals 800 ohms. Because water isn't a particularly good conductor of electricity. So this particular row consisting of 5,000 electroplaques. Uh, well, I can tell you that there are around 140, electro, uh, 140 rows of these electroplaques arranged over here. And each row has 5,000, so you can imagine the magnitude we're talking about. This 0.15 is going to get ratcheted up pretty quickly. So for each row, the EMF produced by each row would be 5,000. Let's assume each row has 5,000 electroplaques into 0.15. So, that's 750 volts for a single row. Well, it don't matter. The whole thing would generate 750 volts as well. I'll call that E row. Now, let's find out R row. The resistance offered by this entire row, that would be 5000 into 0 0.25. And that's 1250 ohms. Uh, quite a considerable resistance. From the resistor simplification loss, we know that we've got 1,250 ohms and 140 of them arranged in parallel. So 1 by R equivalent equals 140 by 1,250. Basically 1 by 250, uh, sorry, 1 by 1,250, 1,250, 1,250, added over 140 times. So R equivalent would work out to be 8.93 ohms. Now, since we've resolved that into essentially a single loop circuit, what we have over here is that current, the internal resistance, the, this thing, not current, sorry. The virtual effective EMF, effective internal resistance, and the external resistance offered by water. I'll move that sigma, that's confusing. Yeah, so this is the equivalent EMF, equivalent resistance, and the resistance offered by water. We will apply Kirchhoff's laws. Well, we don't really need to apply Kirchhoff's laws uh, anymore now that we've simplified this like this. But let's just do it. Kirchhoff's law. Moving around that circle, E equivalent. I'm moving along the EMF, so that's a positive. I'm moving against the current. Let's assume the current to be like that. I'm moving against the current, so that's also positive. Well, so now we have simplified it to this single loop circuit. Let's apply Kirchhoff's law now. And Kirchhoff's law. I'll assume that that's the loop and the current goes in that direction. 
I'm moving against the EMF, so that's a minus E. Uh, against the current, so that's a plus R I, I'll call that an I. So plus I R equivalent. And again, against the current, so plus I R water equals zero. Uh, e equivalent, yeah, E equivalent is 750 volts, so just pumping everything in. It's equal to 750 by 8.93 plus 800. This works out to be 0 0.93 amps, very close to 1 amp. Potentially lethal can kill extremely severe current. So if a tiny little fish happens to just wander around over here and 0 0.93 amp goes across it, extremely lethal current results in instant death or a very painful sting or stun. But why does the electric eel shock itself? I mean, it's also got to have 0 0.93 current, 0 0.93 amp current flowing across it. So for that, we'll find out another small change over here. I'll remove this part. Oh, it's not in pure black. So for that, we'll calculate this other value. I'll do it in green now. The current split across these various electro plaques, 140 of them to be precise. So actually, uh, we found out the current to be 0 0.93 amps. So, over here, the current, actually, this in real life, this is the R water. Over here, it's split into 140 of them. 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 and so on. And overall, I have 140 of these. So the current essentially is split into 140 equal parts. So the current across each arm, I arm, equals I by 140. So that's 0 0.93 by 140. And this would be around 6 milliamps, which is quite tiny. I mean, 6 milliamps is dangerous, but compared to 0.93, it's tiny. And the thing is, the eel, if you look at it, it's such a streamlined, wonderful creature. All of these electroplugs are lined along the outside body of the eel. Provided the 6 milliamp current does not flow into any of its vital organs, well, it would receive a sting nevertheless, but provided it doesn't touch its vital organs, I think the electric eel would very much be able to survive this. And this doesn't necessarily stun or kill the fish, kill the electric eel itself. But 6 milliamps, yes, it is a dangerous current. When it flows across the body, along that body, and doesn't affect the heart or the lungs or other essential vital organs, the fish would very much be able to survive. So this is how we use Ketchup's loss. See you in the next video.